What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow? Hey guys, today is the end of the month, July 31st, bro. It's a Monday, and uh, what was y'all doing over the weekend, bro? I was at Otakon, chilling, you know, just having a nice time, dressing up as Law and One Punch Man and stuff like that. But I heard a whole bunch of YouTubers have been beefing, people getting canceled. Why? Why are y'all like this? What did you do? So guys, we got to talk about speed because apparently he has eye issues as well. That's right, boys. Nick Fury, aka Demo Man here. I uh, took off the patch because uh, I didn't want my eye. I wanted my eye to heal. It's healing very nicely. I'll bet from time to time it does get itchy and I'm still putting on cream and all that jazz. But I show speed, another streamer, another black guy. They're coming for our eyes, dog. This man was walking around with a big old swollen eyeball and my man's is about to turn into Demo Man too. We got to shave his head after that as well. It said breaking speed uploaded YouTube video about the update on the situation and then <laughs> apparently he was roasting KSI's head as well but uh, let me just show you what's going on with speed. He posted a tweet 10 hours ago that said please pray for me guys I beg of y'all I need it and his eyeball is super freaking huge uh, with 400,000 likes and yeah man that's what I was looking like okay that's what I looked like in the beginning of my <laughs> Sty infection. I wonder if this man has three styes in his eyes, bars just like me. I'm very curious. Let's go watch the video. Guys, so right now, y'all, I'm still currently in the hospital right now. I got this. I don't know what the hell is all of this. It's some Tokyo Japanese, Tokyo Ghoul Revengers, One Piece stuff. But right now, I'm currently still in the hospital, you know, and I'm hospitalized. I really just want to go home and stream for y'all. I want to go home, play Fortnite, play FIFA. I don't care what happened to you, dog. Okay? Did you? Did somebody bop you in the head? What's wrong with you? I don't know how long I'm gonna be here. You know, I'm like I said, I am hospitalized. They can keep me in here for months, weeks, days, or years if they want to. <laughs> My man said bumps, weeks, days, or years. <laughs> I just did the MRE, MRI, whatever it's called. And yeah. right now I'm currently still doing this. Like I said, chat, I'm gonna tell you how the symptoms of symptoms. I'm gonna tell you how the symptoms that I have. I have like a huge, it's like an ache right here. And back yeah. Oh, in the back of your head. And this is numb and this part is numb. Oh! So I'm having numbness right here. You got numbness in your head? And I'm having numbness back here and it aches, like hurts, like a little headache. Oh. But what is guys, that? I love y'all boys. Just I thought it was just his eye, but if you got something going on with the head, the, the, the right part of the temporal spectrum of the, the skull, that sounds like a, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but. I, you know, you don't want pain near your brain, second bar, just because, you know, the, the brain is very, very, you know, just, you don't want to mess with that. My man just needs some Excedrin and some ice. I don't know what happened to him. I wonder what the details are, if he'll release that kind of information. But, duh, guy, blood does not look good and speed. Yeah, man, we got you in your prayers, homie, man. I just... I, like I said, man, I just had the same different type of eye, eye issues going on. I wouldn't wish that on nobody. My man's look like he got the level three version of that joint, man. His eye, that's what my eye look like, but I ain't have nothing happening with my brain. So, speed, man, I'm wishing you a... I'm going to say it, a speedy recovery. All right, you got this, dog. Guys, before we get further into today's topics, I'm happy to announce that today's video is sponsored by Teach Hanley. Fellas, okay, real talk. If you're not taking proper care of your face, what are you doing? Not having a proper skincare routine will catch up to you, and by the time it does, it'll probably be too late. But thankfully, Teach Hanley simplifies the process of taking care of your skin. I've been using them for years now. They provide you with everything you need and nothing you don't. I recommend that you guys start with their level one system, which comes with all of the basics. A daily face wash, an exfoliate scrub, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20, and a PM moisturizer. To make it dead simple for guys like us, they provide the instruction card in every box that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. It definitely comes in clutch. But guys, you don't have to take my word for it because they have over 7,000 five-star reviews from customers around the globe. In addition to amazing skin, Teach Henley members get access to amazing benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price, access to exclusive monthly deals, 
Calls are canceled at any time and free US shipping. Seriously, guys, you only get one phase. And a simple, easy skin routine is probably one of the best investments you can ever make. And because Teach Henley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click that link and get started today. And again, special thanks to Teach Henley for sponsoring today's video. Is it the heat? Okay, because I get it. It's hot. My power's been going out. It's been like 110 degrees index over here in the DMV. Nick had said Muda versus XQC, the overreact content. Ah. A cycle begins again. If you guys don't know, there's two YouTubers. There's Muda Heart, aka Some Ordinary Gamers. That's my guy. I go over to his podcast every now and then. He does commentary and just sits here and talks to you guys every day. And then you got XQC, one of the goats of streamers who had that $100 million contract with Kick or whatever. And uh, yeah, these two started beefing over the internet over the whole React content drama that seems to stir around at least once or twice a year. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it started with this tweet here. And yes, I'm calling it a tweet. I don't know what X is. I ain't calling it no damn Zs. I'm not even updating my, my Twitter app, okay? It's all staying the same. I don't know what Elon Musk is going. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, let me most spends months researching, scripting, and editing a video just for React streamers to re-upload the entire thing and provide zero input. And it's a picture of XQC with the shocked face watching a video called the Kennedy assassination and getting way more views and uh, over the uh, you know, the OG video. So Mudohar, quote, retweeted it and said, just a shame that garbage like this fills the recommended tab. Oh man, shots. Are we implying that XQC is garbage? <laughs> no, but uh, the internet will imply that. It's 117,000 uh, likes on here and it started a back and forth with these two writing the goddamn Bible on this goddamn platform, okay? Twitter blue and giving people the ability to write over a certain amount of characters was a mistake. So XQC responded and said, I wonder what triggers people like you so much. Huh? People like you? Huh? <laughs> Revenue share, uh, audience split, algorithm. Now, I've heard this complaint a million times and most public figures try to attack it from multiple angles just to fall flat on their face. I'm watching a vid I like to my people and that's it. In which Mudohar said, I know you're not the brightest, but I didn't expect you to be this intellectually dishonest. Dang! <laughs> Dang, bro. He said, look, I know you're not very smart, but I ain't expect you to be this stupid. Okay. Nothing inherently is triggering. Sorry, I'm instigating. Nothing is inherently is triggering when you view live content on a different platform. It's when you re-upload the content to the same platform and have it copy the same metadata to further, oh boy, show, oh, Oh, here we go. It's not too bad. Hannibalize. I get it. It depends on the creator whose content you're freebooting. But in your own words, just now, you claim that you were sharing the video with your fans with no intention to critique or transform it for fair use. So the idea, guys, if you're kind of lost and you're just like, what the hell is going over here is that there are a lot of React content creators out there who just watch other people's content and videos and then they re-upload it to YouTube, even though it already or originates on YouTube. And then they make a lot of money from doing so. One big person that we'll talk about it later that's probably also getting in kind of that same situation is uh sniper wolf <laughs> another youtuber is coming at her when it comes to reactions and now everybody's kind of like big baby rage mad at like content creators in terms of how they react to content is it transformative enough so for example let's say you and i watch a video if i stop that video once every five or ten minutes and give extremely insightful like advice or tidbits or my own kind of thing we call it transformative and when it's transformative it's completely different from the og content it gives you a reason to watch either the og or the content with me because I'm giving enough of myself into the content to transform it into something else. But people believe that XQC and there's a lot of other lazy streamers out there who literally just put on videos, documentaries, movies. XQC has been guilty of this, The Dark Knight, and sit there and just watch content. <laughs> Two hours later, well, that was great, you know, <laughs> nothing transformative about it, but they did profit off the fact that that video exists. Anyway, I moved to finish and said, you also realize claiming content isn't a task creator you can just do, right? It requires an asset to elevated content management systems. Only the larger studios and the media groups have educate yourself. And then XQ said, damn, I knew you liked using big words so that people would give your takes more importance, but feeling your unfounded criticism, unfounded? <laughs> XQC over here talking about big words and he used the word unfounded. Ain't no way. Criticism full of personal attacks and using anecdotal? XQC, who you got typing your tweets, dog? Who you got typing your zeets, bro? 
ain't no way you don't even know what this word mean evidence to prove that the content is cannibalistic by nature <laughs> yo how are you going to go on somebody when it comes to like big words but then quite literally this sentence is not one that x can see could actually just say like even if you trained him to say this sentence he's not going to say it <laughs> Anyway, they're going back and forth, guys, and I'm just not going to go for this whole tit for tat thing reading these Bibles accounts because ain't nobody got time for that and I don't got the energy for it. All you need to know is that these two were beefing and it eventually got squashed. I think at some point in time, Ludwig entered his uh, opinion somewhere in these tweets as well. And then you have people like um, Destiny, you know, giving takes as well. Destiny over here saying, is it already time again for the virtue singling around evil react content? The reality is, is likely causes little to no harm to any of the actual creators on youtube if it did why aren't there any legions of creators dmca and streamers for watching their stuff why aren't there tons of youtubers begging streamers not to watch or react to their stuff question mark i've never seen so many people crying and pretending to care about such a trivially easy problem to fix so again i think the long and short of it in my opinion when it comes to the entire situation i'm kind of on destiny's side is hey guys it's content okay <laughs> welcome to the matrix okay where youtubers and streamers will fight over things that don't actually really matter just so that we can spend time talking about it. Are there points being made here that actually matter where people are cannibalistic in nature and stealing people's content? Yes, okay? There is nuance in every single subject. This just happens to be the flavor of the day because these two are fighting about it. But next week, I guarantee you, nobody will care because it won't be popular to care. And that's just kind of how it works. And that's what I think Destiny means when it comes to the, the grandstanding because it's like one of those situations that are easily solvable but it's much more you know monetizable to to fight about it to argue about it and to grandstand about it it creates content it, it lets the world go around and we're sitting here talking about it doing just that it definitely got blown out of proportion i do think it's good to you know practice best examples of people using people's content and then trying to at least transform it trying to provide some kind of credit i do think there are good basic industry standards here but in terms of getting mad and big baby rage nah nah it's like <laughs> i'm telling you guys a week from now and a week later from now nobody will care it doesn't mean that it's not important it just you know you will just lose interest so guys before we get into something that i hear is a uh, very dramatic no one's talked about it and it's kind of out of pocket before we get into that here's a palate cleanser okay <laughs> my guy aaron said talk about how old con was uh for you by the way it was great meeting you and finding out you aren't dead rest in peace <laughs> on the down low <laughs> and it's my guy me and aaron man there was a lot of people i went to Otakon 2023 it's the con for like both anime and gaming this month or this weekend and it was also the same time as dream con as well so we'll talk about both of those cons but yeah i was there i was a uh, shirtless law and i was also one punch man i'll show you guys the pictures once they're like done like the the OG ones and stuff. But yeah, it was so freaking cool. Walking around. I did a One Piece meetup where I met up with all the laws and all the Luffy's. And interestingly enough, funny enough, because we'll get into this as well, but nobody was cosplayed, at least the first day, from what I recognize. Nobody, there was no gear fives, uh Luffy's. <laughs> so I was like, wow, everyone out here, not, I would have spoiled the hell. Out. <laughs> I would have came out here with the gear five. But yeah, it was really fun, man. Um, it wasn't too packed. It was a bit hot. Um, there was a storm index going on every everywhere, but it's as long as you stayed inside the hotel and enjoyed yourself, I had a blast. If I ran into you, man, I appreciate you coming up there and saying hi to me, okay? Don't be shy. I don't bite. And um, <laughs> it was really fun. I don't like to go out the house too often, but I would say that this is one of the times that I did enjoy it. But also, my guy Oscar said, DreamCon happened and so many creators pulled up. And you got an epic picture right here, bro, of everybody. Just looking at this picture right now, and I just see here, I see Caleb, I see Berlizzi, I see I see my boy uh, uh, Sylvanas. I see Rico. I see uh, who is Corey? Yeah. <laughs> My boy Corey was there, RDC World. You got um oh my god, you got there's rhyme style in the back. They he had the full squad, Jazzy and Gang, and yeah, they had the oh man. It sucks because it was at the same weekend. I would have loved to come to DreamCon. I heard there was like a Smash tournament, you had TK. It was just, you know, black excellence. Apparently, Corey met up with uh Kai Sanat dog. Yo, they had the entire A and P there. Like, bro, what did I I messed up? I, I should have definitely been here. Okay. DreamCon, y'all just hit me up. I got y'all next year. That's, I, I can't be missing out on this. There's, there's no way. <laughs> Corey, y'all, Corey, I had to get him in the vlog, man. The GOAT. The I've GOAT, the legend. 
12 since 20 since 2019. How you, how you like it? The audio's Good. kind of it's messed hard. up. You like it? Yeah. Compression? Yeah. It's a little overwhelming, well, <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm calibrating as you Yeah, that's good. On. That's so, good. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure me and you, bro. You I just had to give you a flowers real quick. Hey, this is a good thing, It's a legend right here, bro. bro He's a you're the legend. No, no you're the legend, record. bro. Duh. Goats recognizing goats. I don't know. That's also like a black people thing, but whatever. <laughs> Whenever we meet up, we just immediately start sizing the other person up. Like, nah, you, dog. Nah, mm -mm, all you, man. It's just your world. I'm living in it. <laughs> I'm loving the energy, man. You the legend, bro. You be watching. You be watching? You be tuning in? Yeah. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'll be waiting on that upload. Oh, I'll see you in nine months. <laughs> <laughs> That's too soon, Corey, bro. Stop, ta stop talking to you. not going to upload in nine months. Stop playing, dog. Stop playing. But yeah, guys, it was like a good time. You got your boy Burleazy and Corey. You got AMP. You got them playing basketball. You playing dodgeball, bro. Like, oh man, it looked like it was a really, really. It was a, it was a, it was a good time, as you can see. <laughs> I don't like to go out to cons too often, but this seems like one that I'd be definitely. Oh, they doing the electric slide. Grown and sexy after party tonight. Oh, I messed up. Oh, oh my god. So guys, I guess we'll talk about this briefly because I mean, if a lot of you guys venture Twitter, uh, you do now know that it is no longer being called Twitter. Elon Musk has channeled his inner uh, third grader and decided to continue his whole uh, desire of turning everything around him into X. And now it is spread over to Twitter. Uh, Jared said the new Twitter logo and the name is gross. That's right. There was a whole debacle about him changing over to X because apparently it was like copyrighted. He was going to get sued. Apparently like Microsoft owned a version of this X here or something. He took down the logo from the actual building itself from the Twitter logo. But the bird is, uh, he's dead. He's gone. Okay. And Twitter is now just X. And instead of it being tweets, it's called post. And instead of it calling everything else, he's trying to rebrand and restructure and rename this entire thing into completely different things, which is wild. A lot of people are kind of upset about it because you're removing a lot of, well, from a business standpoint, okay, having the ability to have something called Twitter and tweets, the actual brand recognition that you have from that is worth millions of dollars, okay? If someone says tweet, right? You own that, okay? That's to be able to create that tweet. Hey, man, did you leave a tweet? Oh, did you do a quote retweet? Did you do a reply, a ratio? All these things that apply almost directly to Twitter are things that can be removed because, um, yeah, he's changing everything else to rebrand it to be underneath his umbrella of X technology. Like, literally, if you look down here on the bottom right, this was not even planned. It says, what the F is X in technology? <laughs> People saying, please, can we collectively agree we are still calling it Twitter because uh, what the F is X? Yes. If I catch any of you guys calling this platform X, I'm just going to come over across the screen and punch you in the face. It's just that simple. That's a threat. And that's basically kind of it. I'm never going to stop calling it Twitter. There's, there's no way that I'm calling it X. People over here confusing it with X videos and other porn sites and stuff like that. I'm just, I'm just not. I'm going to let Elon do his thing for real like i'm i'm done trying to question like this guy is just going to destroy whatever he wants to destroy and build whatever he wants to build and people are just going to either swing on his nuts and be like hey daddy continue doing what you're doing or they're going to hate him or whatever but it just kind of is what it is at this point one of the my favorite uh i want to say platforms is now just being obliterated it's just over silly things for real the biggest things i just kind of dislike is that i used to have like a community of people that i could find very easily but now with like like Twitter blue and the whole everyone is a verified user and the majority of these verified users are only fan bots at the top of every plat line saying that hey I'm the 0.001% of only fans girl I'm the hottest 18 year old girl out there that's and it's just being spammed with that it's like dang dog we created something really awesome and now it's just uh <laughs> not as much but that's the whole Twitter X situation I'm sure it will continue to, I don't know, digress, or hey, who knows us, maybe Elon Musk will surprise us and uh, not completely destroy this platform, but th th that's not one of the possible Marvel Cinematic Universe's futures that I see incoming. Guys, it's officially here, okay, One Piece, Luffy, Gear 5 occurs next week, one of the greatest transformations in anime history of all time, okay, our boy Mugiwara will be uh, evolving. I think it's at this point, it's too late, okay, the spoilers are there, I think you guys, everybody knows, even the official like one piece trailers and they're all posting it okay it's done all right if you don't know about gear five now it's because you did not want to know and you don't care that's just kind of how it works now at this point but yeah our boy luffy will be transforming the sounds of joy boy is here after getting his ass knocked out by 
Hokkaido. He's about to come alive and it's going to be one of the uh, best films and TVs that people are going to watch on anime. It's an epic moment. Now, people are comparing it also like to Goku transforming and other transformations and yada, yada, yada. And some people are like, yeah, of course it's the best. Some people are like, why are you comparing it to that? It's not whatever. We'll get into that drama later because I love fighting about anime weeb shit. But for now, I'm super excited. I can't wait. I will be watching it. I'll let you guys know when I think. Okay, so what's going on here? This is the one that a lot of you guys asked me to talk about that I'm kind of worried I'm about to stumbling into a, a world of what the F based off just some of these tweets that I've been seeing in terms of like like the, <laughs> the title. Gwen the Knife saying the super mega situation and how apparently they were literally the most racist, transphobic, homophobic, and disgusting people. What? Okay. Number one, who is super mega? But number two, dang, how'd you get hit with all three? The Triforce of Hate. <laughs> <laughs> racist transphobic and homophobic you got all three of those dog what did you do then Jax will hit me out with the original tweet that was on the 27 that said i made a video about my experiences with don and matt slash super mega it will mean a lot if you watched it it's got 40,000 likes and apparently this video was like two hours long or so let's look into what's going on here i'm a little worried but first who the hell is Don and Matt and Ryan? Who is Super Mega? Wait, this is Super Mega? I have seen, I, I have seen this picture here. I've seen this picture. I've seen, I, okay. I heard of Super Mega. I have seen them many times. They have a YouTube channel here that has almost a million subscribers where they make weekly podcasts and sketch comedy video music, videos, let's plays, just whatever else is going on. And, um, yeah, it doesn't look like things are going good for them right now. So let's do a little bit of reading, okay? In November 2021, I was, no, I was essayed by Don on the first night that we had met while dating. All right, guys, okay, just a trigger warning, okay? I didn't think we were getting into this. I thought it was just racist, transphobic, but it looks like also assault is in here. So that's trigger warning, all right? He attempted to physically force me and to give him oral, and the only reason it didn't happen was because I was forced to physically resist him when he didn't listen to my verbal commands to stop. I waited to confront Don until Creator Clash 2022, where I could keep it offline and then never see him again. But then Don was invited to Matt's house in LA right before I moved to LA to stay at the house that they use as an office. Quote, the Super Mega Plex, Super Mega Matt, Ryan, YouTube and channel. So she was going to meet up with him the, the following year to confront him about the situation. I called them before I got there to tell them what happened so I could avoid being around Don, but they gave me mixed messages. Ryan wanted the support and two days later, Matt, a phone call where he went into lawyer mode and prompted, explained to me that technically Don is an employee, so we don't have to do anything, quote, how super mega is his magnus opus and how this would be very bad for them if anyone found out. So these guys went into complete defense mode and said that this girl is basically a liability and they don't want the smoke. Days later, they talked to Don privately at Matt's house where they proceeded to explain to try and get his side of his story, left the conversation with Don saying he didn't know what he did wrong and Matt and Ryan deciding for me that Don and I just needed to talk out in person. The day before I get to their office, Matt texted me and told me he sent Don there and I had to hide in the bathroom for him to leave. During my time at the office, every action was held against me, me and Rav and silent until they felt appropriate to use them to kick us out even though these things consisted of leaving to Tien while I visited my mom for her birthday even though I bought a car leaving town to work Rav's partner having attempted to take their life soon after I arrived and me being still disturbed by what happened with Don and their reaction to it bro what is happening here? We're all held against us and they used it to gaslight us into being framed as lazy when we were working harder than normal to get the less work done due to having no place to work. Any action that wasn't looking for a place or going to see one, aka being faster to going away, was seen as bad when there was no sense of urgency placed upon us to begin with when we arrived. Okay, so were they having a meeting to talk about the legal ramifications of what happened with their confrontation back in 2021 and it sounded like they were having like a business meeting to try to sit down and discuss this in person very confused why this was a confrontation that needed to happen in person right this is something where i mean what was the 
what was the the purpose i suppose that i'm trying to understand here there's a video that talks about it but the last point here says staying at the office was uncomfortable as they did not want us to be there after this event and we ended up homeless as a result of them icing us out and refusing to communicate to us almost completely despite staying at their job even about crucial things like concerned about us living there or when they wanted us gone matt and ryan i feel like i'm missing some chapters living there what what? Matt and Ryan instead delegated this responsibility to their employees who we saw as friends asking us to help them with chores around the house till they had them correspond in their stead about moving out. So they lived together, upon which we realized what was going on and saw ourselves out before we got kicked out. After this, we had no comms with them. We were robbed on the way out of and back from LA. We lost almost everything we had and we couldn't get our belongings from the office while living in the car and from the hotel to hotel for a while because they weren't talking to us. I felt like I couldn't talk about what was going on with me for the past year because I have to explain things that Matt and Ryan clearly didn't want people to know. She also made a follow-up tweet saying that Don's last message to me apologizing for assaulting me by calling it and everything before that, to not write it, Matt telling me the day before I arrived, Don was there. Ryan bringing up wanting to talk about Don like drama plus getting mad. I was sad at his B-Day. All right, I'm having a hard time following this. But it, it, it sounds like a situation where you mixed work with a little bit of romance. And then uh, I guess there was a little bit of, uh, you know, shaboinky boinky going there. And somebody that got a little bit too aggressive there watched a little bit of two Twitter X, if you know what I mean. And then, yeah, and then started turning into this. She thinks it's sexual assault. And the other guys are like, oh my God, I'm getting the hell out of here because I'm not trying to ruin my brand. And there's a back and forth. But where's the the, the transphobic, uh, where's all the comments about them being like racist and transphobic? <laughs> Where are those? Anyway, so Lex made this video saying my experience with Don, DRR, and Super Mega. It's a two hour and 16 minute video. Uh, it has 23,000 likes, 1,000 dislikes. And um, just as a recap of the shows here, the last year and a half has been the worst times of my life. I was assaulted and the people who I thought were my friends used their involvement to keep me quiet about it because it benefited their YouTube channel. My silence has been an advantage to them to my own detriment, leaving me suicidal and traumatized while also not even being able to tell the people closest to me what happened out of fear of telling on my friends, I can't do it anymore. God, it's one of those circles too, it sounds like when you, man, I'm Oof, oh, this messy, bro. This messy. Have you ever kept a secret for someone else that you didn't need to? If you haven't, good, don't do that. Um, but if you have, uh, I know what that's like now. For the past year and a half, almost two now, I've been keeping a secret that I didn't need to for someone else's sake. And that someone else was someone very close to me, as was the person who hurt me. At no point was I supported uh, enough to even be incentivized to keep a secret for them, but I did out of loyalty that I didn't need to have because they didn't have any for me. I think I was just too naive to see that. By the time I did realize that it was too late to do anything, like, for me to help myself. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. Yeah, it's making know. sense. Maybe talking about it will make me feel less alone. Um, for the past year, I've been, I like to call it brain broken, but I try not to joke about it too much because I don't think it's like healthy. I'm self-deprecation. Well, yeah. And it's frustrating because it feels like completely preventable causes. <clears throat> if you've followed me for any amount of time, you may notice that um my posts are very sporadic and it's not just like i don't know i'm i'm doing stuff but the things i was known for like drawing i all of a sudden just didn't have time to do that anymore okay so she's been in a deep dark depressive state holding on to a lot of uh baggage that has come from the situation with uh these guys uh and uh yeah she's she's speaking out i don't have uh two hours to sit here and look at this with you guys now maybe we'll do a deep dive at it uh, another point in time but um yeah she said all they had to do was play games and be normal and they screwed it all up uh, seeing how nervous you are actually say these things out loud is so heartbreaking. The behavior you fell victim to is disgusting and vile. I hope you find peace. I hate how these positive bro YouTubers always end up ruining their reputation over something so dark and so horrible. Uh, doing a 180 like this on a friend because they were assaulted and requested one very mild form of support, i.e. making sure you don't run into your assaulter from them is crazy. You asked for even less than the bare minimum, really, and ended up ostracized from social circles and made homeless by the people you trusted. God. 
damn. I hope you get the time and space to heal you didn't get through the experience. I don't only mean the assault, but also the way you were treated afterwards by the people around you. And then you blame yourself too much, girly. I'm so sorry. So yeah, it looks like these YouTubers are getting absolutely cooked. And I'm curious, did they respond to the situation yet? Is there is there their side of the story available? So guys, I looked more into the story for you guys and found out there was another type of whistleblower person who came out by the name of Leighton Stollard. Now, if you look here, this is a tweet from the Super Megas Twitter here that says, we are aware that our ex-employee Leighton Stollard has made some statements about us accusing us of homophobia behind the scenes. Believe it or not, this tweet actually dropped uh, in April 17th of 2023 which is May, June, July, almost four months ago uh, when he actually got dropped from uh, Super Mega as an ex-employee. However, Layton released a VOD on his Twitch saying, my Super Mega story, it's a three- our VOD of him talking about uh, what he went through while he was working there. So now you have two people who are coming out talking about the conditions with Super Mega, uh, both of them probably being a bit unique in nature, but yeah. One of you guys linked me to this thread here that said, things from Layton's VOD on Super Mega that I've learned, a thread saying, Matt and Ryan are racist, homophobic, and transphobic. Now, Matt and Ryan do not care about suicide and joke about Daniel's death. They both cheated on their partners, even through sexting or IRL cheating. They sexually harassed, assaulted Leighton by showing their dicks, balls, and assholes on multiple occasions without his consent. And Matt filmed him peeing without his consent. What the hell? Freaking weirdos. When Leighton was stressed about moving, Matt just plugged their upstart deal instead of being a good friend. When he used upstart, they made fun of him on the podcast. Uh, they got in a fight with Leighton over signing a book for a kid who survived a suicide attempt. They made fun of the kid and didn't take it seriously. They purposely excluded Leighton from things on multiple occasions, the biggest being Ryan's birthday party. They invited him over after it was over and hit all the birthday decorations. It was obvious it was a party and they made Leighton feel unwelcome. They made uh, Leighton signed an NDA just to get his severance pay. They threatened to not pay him at all unless he signed it. Uh, Ryan sexes fans. And for context on the first bullet point, they consistently use the hard R N word as a joke around the office, consistently making homophobic jokes around the office and misgender Ryan's partner regularly. All right. So claims from Leighton and his VOD is that these guys are basically big pieces of shit. Uh, since then, I have not seen them addressing anything about the situation or the video, but you guys definitely know that the YouTuber apology will be coming and uh, hopefully we don't see any ukuleles. So that's the TLDR of the super mega situation. If I get more details, I'll keep you guys posted and follow up, especially when they do eventually respond and reply. It looks like they're going to be responding to both Layton, the ex-employee, and the girl who came out as well who was saying that she was being sexually assaulted and how her treatment occurred after she tried to, I guess, remedy and, you know, seek kind of a counsel for the situation and how it was handled terribly. And yeah, they're going to have to respond and do their side. And when they do their side, we'll talk about the whole thing as well. I'll keep you guys posted. But yeah, man, more of the story. Careful mixing business with play. OK, if you got a business, you know, don't don't shit where you eat. People never follow that advice and it always comes back to bite them in the ass. And then too, like, I guess just don't be an awful human being. Like, I mean, I don't know their side of the story, but like, <laughs> I also know for the most part, people who are just chilling and minding their business and doing good things and having good energy usually aren't having multiple people come out to speak out against them about several uh, uh, incidents, not just one, but several types of things. Usually if you're keeping the good energy around you, you don't have a bunch of people trying to, you know, call you out. So we'll see how this turns and I'll let you guys know when that does occur. Quick Patreon update, but we're almost at a hundred Patreon guys. If you guys want to support me in the channel, just, you know, like five bucks and you get, you know, infinite pictures of Indy. Uh, I do this thing called the Omniverse. I opened up 10 more slots where I basically talk about everything, YouTube, money, and fitness, help people become YouTubers, help people when it comes to stocks and investments and stuff and the fitness journey because I'm a gym geek as well. A lot of you guys have been wanting to get in there. I opened up 10 more slots. Okay. So just get in there and then that's it. I probably won't open more slots until next month, sometime mid month or something like that. I don't want to overwhelm it, but I appreciate you guys supporting me. I'm telling you, like, if you want to help me out, the Patreon, whether you're the Omniverse or here, this helps me out the most because man, like I'm not trying to throw a sponsor on every single video for you guys. And uh, it just, 
it would be much better if you guys supported me here versus anywhere else in the world. So thank you. But all right, guys, that's all I have for today's video. If you made it to the end, just before you leave, I'll drop that like, okay? If you hear me say, and I ask you to drop the like, and you're still not dropping the like, but just, uh, hey, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see something here, okay? I'm trying to get this attendance record. I want to make sure I'm making good video for you guys because I'm trying to try to make some more. I love y'all. I will see you later on in this week. I've been gone since from Otakon. I want to make more content, so I'll try to drop as much as I can. And if there's anything else you guys want me to talk about, you know where to find me on Twitter, not X, okay? I ain't calling that stuff. I love y'all. Stay safe on the streets because I'm streets ain't safe. And uh, yeah, be good. I'll take it easy. Peace.